Dead Bees. So that's what this one is about. Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and this is where I talk about the different things that I'm drawing. And right now I'm drawing a series called Esoteric Crumble Flux, which is kind of a combination of things that we could and should be doing, and also threats to society. All the various different ways that society could collapse, the world can end, or things like that. And this is one of those ones that is maybe a little bit exaggerated, but it's definitely threatening. Bees, specifically colony collapse disorder, could be seriously problematic. But before I talk about bees dying, I want to talk about bees themselves. Bees are rad, so they are highly intelligent. At least one scientist is convinced that they're sentient. They can adapt. They're learning to do things that they've never actually had a biological imperative in the history of their time on this planet to actually do. They can recognize human faces. They use tools. They've been known to manipulate dung into tools and use it. They can be trained, not just trained to memorize something, but they can be trained to understand a task. And then if the task changes, they can adapt to the changes and then they can teach each other. One study showed that there was this researcher who taught the bees and he had like a fake little bee on a stick and he'd push this ball into the hole, into the middle of their kind of research thing. And when the ball went into the hole, then everybody would get a sugary treat. And after a while of them watching this happen, they started pushing the ball into the hole to get a sugary treat. And then he changed up the situation where he'd glue the balls down and they had to find a ball that was loose. Or they were trained on yellow balls, um, but they glued the yellow balls down so they had to find black balls and use the black balls. And then interesting things started happening. They started going for the closest ball to the hole. So there's like evidence of problem solving. And then the bees that weren't trained or weren't involved in the training started to know how to do it because they were being taught by the bees that were being trained. And they kind of do this. Uh, it's pretty crazy stuff. Like I mentioned before, they can recognize human faces and remember those human faces for up to two days. And they researchers think that they probably think that our face is like some sort of weird flower, but they can recognize it. And when given a choice between a face that has given them uh, sugar or food and a face that haven't, hasn't, they go to the faces that have given them food in the past. So they have human facial recognition memory. They also do this butt wiggle dance to teach each other directions. So one of them, like a scout or something, goes out and finds a good food source and then will come back and it will teach everybody the directions to that place. And so instead of just following that one bee, he actually comes back and says, all right. And then everybody watches and he does a little dance and they can find the food without having to follow him. They do math, uh, like a number of different mathematical concepts. They can count and reason they can navigate by counting a specific number of landmarks. Anyway, really cool little creatures. And they are responsible for pollinating up to one third of our crops. And as you guys probably know, they go from flower to flower, right? They've got this little, these little different mechanisms, little hairs and other things, fur and stuff that kind of picks up pollen. And as they're extracting nectar from the flowers, they pollinate the plants. And that's how the plants reproduce. It's the pollination by, you know, them getting the nectar, which turns into honey or whatever, some kind of food source. Um, but they get the nectar. And while they're doing that, they rub up against the pistons and then they transfer that to other plants. The UN has estimated that in the last 50 years, we've increased our dependency on bee pollination by 300 percent. And uh, they like I said, they pollinate a third of our crops. In fact, 85 percent of the plants in Europe reproduce with some sort of bee involvement, and nine out of 10 of all flowering plants are pollinated by bees. So if bees died, if they just stopped being or they ceased to exist, colony collapse disorder or some other thing just killed all the bees, we would probably not like end society, but we would have a lot of problems. We just still have rice and corn and wheat, a lot of tuber plants, like root vegetables, potatoes, and things like that. Um, anything that's pollinated by wind. Uh, so there'd still be some of that, but we don't have a good mechanism to replace bees. Um, like human involvement or robotic involvement is inefficient and not really an effective way to do it. Um, and so we would lack like a nutritional variety um, certain fruits and stuff would completely drop out of our of our 
food source. And we'd have huge problems when it comes to this type of thing. But, you know, we'd still have corn and wheat and rice. So it probably wouldn't completely kill us. But the problem is that we're experiencing right now is that we have a single point of failure. Wild bees are actually more effective pollinators than domesticated bees, for lack of a better term. Honeybees, uh, domesticated bees. Um, wild bees are better at it. The wild bees are kind of under threat because there's a drastic decline because of pesticides, encroachment of wild spaces, planting a bunch of one type of crop in an area, emissions. Some people have theorized that certain types of signals like cell phone towers and electricity, electromagnetic fields, something like that might be causing some problems. We don't know exactly, but there is a markedly large decline in wild bee populations. And so industrialized farming uses one type of bee, the honey bee, uh, to pollinate everything. And they truck them all over the place, but they're basically using that single type of bee, which is a single point of failure. Um, and so whereas a lot of things in nature are kind of cyclical, where, where bee populations or other types of animal populations kind of ebb and flow and things like that, a huge portion of our food source is reliant on a single point of failure. And so if that thing fails, we don't really have a way to replace it. And so that's what this poster is about, the threat of the death of bees. Some things that we can do is encourage government regulation um, to stop polluters, companies from destroying wild spaces um, so that we leave wildflowers and plants so that uh, we have a lot of diversity in the food sources for the wild bees um, where the areas where wild bees can kind of roam around. It's really important. So they also spread to our farming areas and things like that if they have these wild spaces. Again, they're more efficient and more effective pollinators. And they have the benefit of not being a single point of failure because there's a variety of wild bees rather than just the single type. Because if something comes along to destroy one type of bee, and that is our single point of failure, meaning that, that we rely on that one type of bee, that's a huge problem. But if something comes along and destroys one type of bee and we've got a variety of bees from wild to hand domesticated, uh, then we don't have a single point of failure. So that's helpful. Um, anything we can do to reduce emissions is always pretty good in these sorts of things. Um, anyway, bees are cool. We should protect them. Famously, Einstein said that if the bee population died out, then human beings would have four years to live. Except there's no real proof that he actually said that, and it's not actually true because we would be okay. We just not we wouldn't be as well off as we are now from a nutritional standpoint or food source standpoint. Um, just nutritionally kind of limited in the variety of foods that we might have. And that would probably cause lasting effects on other things. Uh, there would probably be food shortages. I mean, we're running up against this and it isn't necessarily bee related, but it's kind of interrelated. We're running up against the problem where we're using less and less land to produce more and more food. And at some point in time, that's going to be unsustainable, uh, either through water shortages, which is a big problem that we're not really addressing now. Uh, bee colony collapsing, or any number of things uh, where if any of these things go out, we have major food shortages. I mean, even now with trucking and stuff that's going on, we've got some difficulty getting food from one place to another place. So anyway, hopefully you like this drawing. If you're interested in this or other types of things that I'm doing, you can check out the other esoteric crumble flux pieces that I've done at my site at coreykerr.com. Uh, like this video, share it, do all the stuff. If you want to be notified uh, when I do these things and make these little essays and whatnot, then get on my email newsletter at coreykerr.com slash email. And uh, that's it for today. So go make stuff.